I want to look at the stopping distance problem again. So I have a car going 30 meters per second and it stops in 60 meters. It's a minimum stopping distance with a reaction time of half a second. And what is the stopping distance after 45 if it, the car were going 45 meters per second? And so my first step was to, to draw a picture. So, so let me get my picture back and, and get myself to understand what's going on. And so there's this, at some point the person wants to stop and so there's a reaction time then so the the person goes some distance where there's an acceleration equal to zero before they actually apply the brakes and then uh, 60 meters later the 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 person stops so here's this region where there's a maximum acceleration because this is the minimum stopping distance where the car is actually slowing but before that there's this distance that the car travels during the reaction time before the person puts on the brakes and so before when I looked at this I I said well I'd like to apply my constant acceleration relationships except the the acceleration is not constant. So I broke it up into two different regions, applied the constant acceleration relationships, and then uh, used that to solve the problem. However, let me take a step back then, and instead of using constant acceleration relationships, use my fundamental definitions and see if that can, can get me anywhere. The first thing I'm going to do is, instead of uh, going right away to a mathematical description, I, I want to look at a, a graphical representation of what's happening. Now I know that the total distance and um, that that it travels and so I'm going to look at the velocity as a function of time. Okay and so what's happening is that okay so there's this reaction time of of half a second and during this region the, the velocity is constant and then it go, undergoes constant acceleration until the velocity is zero, which means there's then a, a negative slope in the velocity until it reaches zero. And I don't know what this what this final time is. Okay, uh, but what I do know from my fundamental relationships that the velocity is the derivative of the position function. And that tells me then that the integral underneath the velocity versus time curve is the total displacement of the object. And I'm given that the total displacement of the object is 60 meters, and I know that the area, the, the, the integral of the velocity versus time curve is simply the area underneath the curve. And since the area is simply a rectangle and a triangle, that's a really trivial relationship to create. So if I want to try to create a relationship between uh, all these parameters using a graph and my fundamental definitions, I have that the total uh, displacement is the integral, and that's the area under the curve, which is this this first area, which is base times height, base is one half, times the height, which I've, I've given to be, uh, well, I do yellow, I guess, this first starts at 30 meters per second. And so the initial height then is, is 30, that's the area of, of, uh, of this first rectangle. And so then the area of the triangle is uh, one half times the well the height we'll call 30 times the base which is this time here which is delta t which is an unknown delta t uh, but this is this is equal to 60 i i know what that is and so just this first relationship it tells me this time difference delta t and uh i can go ahead and calculate what that is. I, I'm not going to just yet. Um, what else, how, how else can I relate this delta t to my unknown, which is my maximum acceleration of the car? That's what I'd like to find. Well, that, uh, so that maximum acceleration can be found from this last region, from sort of here, here to here, 
where the acceleration is constant. And so the final velocity is just equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time interval, which I can find uh, immediately from here. And so, uh, in fact, I can just substitute in for delta t and find the acceleration directly. This is equal to zero, and so delta t then is equal to minus the initial velocity, which is uh, 30, divided by the acceleration. Okay, and so now I have, if I substitute that in, I have my final 60 is equal to 15 plus uh, 15 times negative 30 over the acceleration. And, and so here, I, I'm a little bit violating my, my rules of, of not plugging in numbers right away. Uh, but some of this is, is because I've, I've solved the problem before, and, and so um, I'm skipping steps a little bit, but we could save it to um, uh, uh, plug in all the numbers at the end. And so we have so 15 so minus 150 divided by A is equal to 60, or uh, negative 150 over A is equal to 45, A is equal to... <laughs> See, I'm giving you a perfect example of why you don't plug in numbers until at the end. Of course, the uh, if the delta T um, here should be this A uh, here is 15, sorry, the 30 divided by 2, I'm losing my, this 30 by, uh, 30 uh, divided by 2 comes to a 15 there, and so that 15 times 30 gives us 450, and so we have uh, negative 450 divided by A is equal to 45, or A is negative 450 divided by 45, or negative 10 meters per second squared. So other than uh, trying to do my algebra too quickly, um, we've got the, the acceleration just falls directly out of the problem. And so now, to, to find out what the stopping distance at, uh, for 45, we just do the problem again. And so now this is 45. And so the total distance distance is the area under the velocity versus time curve. And that's going to be now uh, 45 times half the, the area under that rectangle plus uh, one-half times 45 times this final time difference here, delta t. But now that I know the acceleration, which is the slope of this line? And so the slope, which is uh, rise over run is equal to then uh, 45, the rise, the negative of course, is going down, uh, rise over the run, which is delta t, and the slope is negative 10. So our time difference is equal to 4.5 seconds. And so I can plug that in there and I get that my total distance is, I can pull out, in fact, the 45 times 1 half uh, times delta t plus 1, which is 5.5 seconds. I'm just sort of factoring that. Then I don't have to plug so many numbers into my calculator. And then I just calculate what's left, and I get 123.75 meters which is exactly what we had before.
And so in this case, uh, we used pretty much just the, fun de the fundamental definitions as well as a graphical representation of the problem. And to, to uh, be honest, it, it went a lot faster and there was a lot less algebra to do.